How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode from Appalachian Apertures. Uh, this episode is going to be a quick look into uh, a trip I did into Jekyll Island with uh, my wife and Chris Greer. And um, the audio, I had a problem with some of it because it was so windy. Uh, I didn't have no protection on my mic and uh, the wind was just really loud. So what I'm doing, I just did a collection of videos and short clips and mixed them with some of the images I got from there and just put it to some music. So it's about three minutes long. Um, and so I'm going to show that first. And then after the video, if you want to hang on and nerd out a little bit, I'm just going to kind of talk about some of the images I got there and uh, why I took them. You know, some I liked more than others, and I have one that's a favorite. So anyway, if, uh, if you want to spend some time and give us a little bit of support and watch the video, and uh, I'd love to hear your comments of uh, what you think and which one's your favorite one. So again, thanks for uh, watching and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching that little clip there. As you can see, the wind conditions were just brutal. Um, I didn't have any wind protection on my mics, and it just really messed with audio. So I just kind of uh, went with a little short clip there and decided to talk about the images and what I was kind of uh, thinking during my process of taking them. Um, Th this was all, there's no, it's not shutter speed, it, it's not really depth of field, so to speak. Um, it's, it's all composition here, and it shows that photography is a game of inches. Um, I really, like with this one, uh, this image here, um, I lowered my tripod to get that center, that center piece of driftwood um, to keep it from touching the driftwood on the right. So just a few inches um, really makes a difference because if that was to clip the the driftwood there, if they were to touch each other, it kind of flattens the image. So 
with it being separated, it kind of gives like a sense of one's behind the other. And uh, so that's what this is all about. Just uh, moving left or right, um, up or down. And uh, this was the first morning um, I was there. Jessica and I were going to go meet Chris to take a trip over to Cumberland. But I wanted to see Driftwood Beach. So we popped in there just for a little bit. It was extremely foggy, um, which was awesome. I mean, it was so pretty. And uh, the obvious decision here was to convert this to black and white. And I just love that back piece of driftwood um, against that fog. It just really creates like an eerie vibe to it. Um, but the driftwood there is gorgeous and uh, it's fun to shoot. I mean, it's it's a popular place and there's limited compositions there. But, you know, if you've never shot it, um, it's just it's really fun. Um, but anyway, yep, I, I really liked how this turned out. I got, it was uh, first thing in the morning, so there was no footprints. Um, I like the ripples in the sand kind of gives some texture to it. And, uh, then everything from there on out was just kind of moving and, and zooming in and making sure nothing touched. But, uh, yeah, I really liked how this image turned out. So this image is a little different than the others. Um, I like it just as well though. And um, I, I've, saw, I've seen this before. Uh, one of my favorite photographers, and he also has a YouTube channel, um, Adam Gibbs. Uh, his work is fantastic, and he's a great teacher of composition. But uh, he was along a beach near uh, Vancouver Island, I believe. I know that's where he's from. And uh, he was walking along, and he saw these, these patterns. And um, he actually found a sand dollar that he placed with it, and it kind of mimicked a moon. So it was really cool. So that's where I got this idea. But um, when I was walking along, I saw these patterns and I was trying to find out, you know, figure out which ones I liked best and what caught my eye. A few of them had some footprints around and uh, they were a little bit busy. But I kind of like these three. And uh, so I shot them. And this is just something to give you an idea. And I hope this works for you like it did for, for me when I watched Adam's video. So it just kind of put me on alert. Um, there's all these little things that people just walk over all the time that can actually create a very nice image. So anyway, I hope you like it. This third image, um, to me, seems a, a tad off balance. Um, I, I mean, I like it. I think the colors are pretty. Uh, the driftwood is obviously pretty. And but compositionally, it seems a little bit off balance. Um, I tried to to fix it in in the field. Um, my plan was to get that very back right piece of driftwood back there tucked underneath the um, the main the main centerpiece. Um, but when I would move the the left one would get you know the the limbs of the left piece would get all tangled up and and um with the main the main driftwood so that's about as close as i could go or far as i could go over um without everything getting clipped so i went with it um it was just a beautiful place and when you're there you just kind of try to make things happen and and uh, i like it enough to kind of put in the video but you know it's, it's something i probably wouldn't make a print of and it's something i wanted to share with you guys just to show, uh, you know, not everything turns out. And uh, and sometimes you actually like it in the field, but once you get it back on the computer, it just seems a little off. I'm not sure that's what makes it off, but that's what my eye is seeing anyway. It just seems like everything is like lean to the right. But anyway, um, that's what you do. You just take them and you get them back and some are good and some are not. But we, uh, I wanted to share one of the ones I wasn't quite happy with. This image is from the last morning we were there. Um, woke up early. We're going to get there before daylight and looked at my phone. And we actually had some coastal flooding warnings uh, issued for Jekyll Island. Um, we decided to go anyway. Um, once we got to the beach, the waves were coming up all the way to the very back. And uh, the night before we had, you know, we could go all the way down to that, that back piece of driftwood. Uh, with no problems and 
we got there that morning and it was probably about three feet of water up it. So it really limited what we were able to do. Um, the wind was, I don't know how fast the wind was, but it was ripping. And um, one of the other issues is like you'd have your tripod set in the sand and when the water would come up to you and recede, it would pull some of the sand from underneath your tripod. So it'd cause it to, to kind of uh, drop down a little bit. And um, if you were doing like a long exposure, so it was like difficult conditions to work in and, you know, that's part of the challenge and some of the fun. Um, but we were getting some some decent light. The sun was trying to peak out. So we that's kind of why we ended up staying there because um, we knew we had a, a chance for some light. Um, but it was still, you know, really early in the morning. Um, the sky was all gloomy and it was supposed to storm all day. Uh so it was all just kind of taking a bunch of images, um, trying to get, you know, some sharp, um, at least something sharp. And, but it was kind of cool because when the water would, would, would recede, it would kind of wrap around that, that tree right in front of me. And so that's kind of what I was focusing on just to see what kind of pattern I could get to get with, uh, around that tree. And, uh, but anyway, I like it. The light was kind of cool. I like the warm and the cool tones. And the uh, the dreary feel and the stormy the stormy water kind of uh, kind of fit the day, but uh, anyway, I, it's one of those that you know I'm not in love with the image, but I'm I'm definitely happy with how it came out. This was actually probably the best directional light that uh, I had the whole trip. Um, the sun was setting to my right, um, and it was coming across. It was real low on the horizon. And it was hitting this uh, driftwood, um, just it was so pretty. And uh, coming across the sand nice. And um, there was some footsteps in the sand, you know, it was like it, this was from the evening. And um, so, th you know, that's kind of a little bit of a challenge. I had to kind of get those out of there. But again, with this image, it's all moving, you know, left a few inches or down a few inches or it's just separating all these little limbs to make sure they do not touch each other. And uh, like I said, it just kind of creates depth and 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 to me it adds to the image. And uh, just when you're out in the field sometime and you see like some prominent trees, uh, trunks or, or this uh, situation like this, just kind of hold your camera phone up and just kind of take a step to the side or kind of move it up and down and try to separate everything and just see how it, how it does. Um, it's, uh, it, you know, it does make a big difference, but anyway, the light here is obviously is, uh, what made the image. Um, you can see it hitting the, the roots and, and the, the right edge of all the limbs, but yeah, I was really happy with this one. It's, it was probably my second favorite from the day. This image is my favorite from the trip into Jekyll. Um, it was just a beautiful sunset. Uh, the colors were per uh, beautiful. We had some purples and some oranges and yellows and blues. So we had this full pastel color, color palette. And uh, the, the tide was just perfect. It was, uh, I kind of was walking around this piece of driftwood trying to see what worked and um, I really like this angle. Uh, the The waves were coming up just to the line of the driftwood, so when they would recede back, it you know there was like this little line of of the foam of the the front of the wave, and it kind of created like this leading line all the way through the scene to the driftwood and actually all the way back to the light source. So uh, and also on the right side of the wave. When it was receding back, it was causing this like little reflection. So it adds kind of a little bit of an interest there, which I really like. Uh, there are some little bitty rocks kind of giving texture along the sand. Um, but I, I like this square crop with this one, and I think it would make a beautiful metal print, um, which I, I probably will uh, end up doing one and um, recently had someone ask for it. But uh, yeah, I, this... 
this was definitely my favorite and uh, it closed out a beautiful trip to Jekyll. If you've never been, um, I highly recommend it. I think Chris and I will be doing a workshop at uh, Jekyll and Cumberland Island, which is one of the most magical places on earth. Um, but anyway, I really appreciate you guys watching this video and, uh, and all the support you've given Chris and I along this, uh, this journey here. So you guys take care and thanks for watching.